This company is called EHC. So, electric heating company. And they do a range of electric boilers, water, electric water, everything, electric water cylinders, electric radiators. So this is a very good company for all heating that's electric, heating water and heating, central heating, underfloor heating that's electric. So we're doing a electric boiler change. So this is a uh, Citra Sadia, Sadia. So it's quite a common electric heater. I think this is a six kilowatt. Electric heater. Um, so we had a gas boiler, I think, originally in here, and then this has all been changed. The pipe work's been changed, so it was working on electric system. So this cylinder does the hot water, and it's got immersion heaters and a time clock there, which is working fine. And this just does the radiators. So it's been off all summer, and then he's tried to switch it on, and then it's not working. So. We've got a, a drop in pressure as well. We haven't even drained it yet. We've got some water in here on the floor. The floor's saturated. So we're gonna take this off, <coughs> drain it down. Just got it connected to that now. So we're gonna drain it down first, whip that off. And then we've got another boiler there, which is a much better boiler, electric boiler that we're gonna fit. This in here used to have a gas boiler which has been converted converted to all electric now. So there's the old flue pipes. So there's multiple things wrong in here. These flue pipes, you can see there's a bit of water dripping off there. So the condensation, because these pipes are angled down, downward for the condensation to come back to the boiler. Um, obviously condensation is building up in it and the water is running back into this cupboard and dripping onto the floor. So that's been doing that ever since this was taken out. So that's the natural as the weather's colder, we've got more condensation now. So that needs sorting out. So that doesn't happen. Um, and then also there's leaks in here on this system that's been piped because as you can see, because this is a, an apartment block, they're all thrown up with plasterboard. So all the walls are all plasterboard walls within these, these apartments. So. As you can see, there's the old like plasterboard fixings. They just rip out the wall very easily. So here, because he's not done an angle on this, he should have done a foot. Of, that pipe should be tight back to the wall, but instead it's just sat. And it should come over this and go back flat to the wall. So these pipes will reach. So what he's done is another solution. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. He's cut these pieces of copper to sit against, you know, to make up the gap of the wall, but he's used these crap plasterboard fixings to take weighty pipe and a weighty pump. So they've obviously all pulled out. I would only ever use these pigtail plasterboard fixings for putting a picture on the wall, nothing more than that. You want to use these more substantial ones that plunge into the wall and then they pull. They go in long and then they squeeze tight behind the plasterboard. So, here. So these, if you're doing anything that's fairly substantial on plasterboard, not too heavy, but you know, just fairly heavy, you want to be using these really in the plasterboard. This spoiler, seeing as though it's so light, normally if it was a heavy thing, I would screw plywood to this stud work and then fix the boiler to the plywood. But as it's only carrying some pipe work and this boiler is very light, we're gonna use these, these fixings to, to do it. So as you can see, <coughs> that stepped off the wall. So this whole pipe work is just, just flapping about. Yeah. And the weight of the boiler here, this is where it was going into the bottom of the boiler, was carrying this pipe work. No clips there. All these clips have pulled out of the wall. Yeah. So this whole piece of pipe work with this heavy pump on it was supported by 
the joint on the bottom of the boiler. So we've had some leaks coming up on here as well. So we need to fix this back properly and then get it connected and then cap them off. And that'll stop these leaks on these joints where the strain is on the pipe and then cap them off too. So there's no water dripping into here. So this is mounted now. New pipe on the top, got rid of the old, there's some push fits in here, which are fine, but these are better. So we've got rid of the old push fits and put a new piece in there into the top. This is all fixed to the wall now. So they're good, these boilers as they don't take up much room, Slim Jim one. And then we've piped, re-piped it out the bottom got rid of the push fits, got rid of all that off here and just put some solid brass ones on. And they're a lot more sturdy, more rigid. We've done that. We've just got to rewire this flex because they've used a six mil, I think. But it's not H07. It's not heat proof, this. It's just a PVC, which feels quite brittle now. So we've got this H07, chunky. It's very big cable because the rubber's so thick, the insulation on it, but it's just a three core six mil. From the isolator to electric heaters, any sort of electric heating it's supposed to have from the isolator it's supposed to be in a heat proof, flexible cable. So we'll get rid of this PVC cable and then we're gonna replace it with a rubber cable. It's gonna come in the bottom grommet there. And go into them connections there. And then we'll have to rewire this control cable because it's no longer long enough. And that comes out the back of the back box from this time clock. That's gonna control switch the boiler on and off. So this is where the timers are set, programs are set. That brings this on. And then the pump we need to rewire because the flex wasn't long enough to reach. So we've took that off. We're gonna put a new cable from there into the bottom as well. Once this fires the boiler up, the control cable, calls for heat, fires the pump up, turns the heater on. So water starts flowing and then the heater comes on and it all works together. So this is all the circuit board to control that operation. Okay, we've done this now, all connected up. All brackets on now, stand, stand off, stood off the wall there, supporting the pipe work. Redone all these, took all the old clips off, fixed them properly. This isn't all flapping about anymore now. Uh, these we prefer using these than plastic clips because this is the stuff that we use for metal containment so same stuff brackets at the back threaded bar as long as you need it you've got a bit of threaded rod there you just cut to length and then you just put these on if you've got pipe at all different heights uh, from the wall so that before was you know all loose Whereas it's fixed tight to the wall now, that's not going anywhere. So this pump is supported properly. All this pipe works supported properly. Um, so it's nice and secure now. All right, so we've rewired the pump there. Nice neat clips around to the, into the boiler and the stuff we've at the bottom. Rewired the control cable. So it comes down there, goes into the connections here at the bottom. And then we've got the supply cable, which is a new 6mm H07, which goes in the bottom there as well for our 32 amp supply to this. <coughs> so that's all done. Now, so if we turn the power on, we've tested all this already. So we've just done a minor work certificate for this and noticed as well that on his board, his last his inspection was due a year ago. So. We've advised a uh, condition report to be done as well as it's recommended on the installation stickers. So we've got power on now. 
Just turn that off. Might make it easier to see. We've got the power symbol on now, yeah? Because the isolator's on. So it's going to override this. The, that's fired the pump up so the little symbols come on for that so the pump's fired up that's circulating the water it starts to circulate the water before it fires the actual heater, heater up the heating element to protect the element so it's got cold water moving past the element first and then there'll be a click that light will come on when there's a click and there's big relay in here nice chunky relay yeah you know that click on then and that's brought the heater light on so you've got this nice chunky contactor in here whereas normally they were quite a small contactor on the circuit board it's got a nice meaty one in here so that's going to withstand that high load switching much better over a long period of time so that means power on pump circulating heat calling yeah and then I can feel that this now is getting warm at the top so it's cold return into the bottom flow out of the top back to the radiators back from the radiators flow and return there so that's that functioning now and pipe work secured much better than what it was before. So these are the two heaters side by side. This is the old one we've taken out. It's a six kilowatt. And then this is the seven kilowatt one that we're putting in. So it's a lot more substantial unit got a lot more control on it stainless steel heat exchanger and five-year warranty this one isn't stainless steel the heat exchanger one year warranty it's a bit more of a flimsy you know, soft metal this is a lot more rigid and this one's just flimsy, very thin construction. So when that's on the wall, it bends and twists. It bends and twists easy, so you can't get a good fixing on that. And this one's a lot more substantial because it's got a return lip, so it's uh, more solid. A thicker steel used to do it and its construction is better, it's heavier. So this one's cost about 800 quid. That one probably cost about, I'm not too sure about that, maybe 300 quid. So there's a considerable difference in cost, but there's a, con a considerable difference in quality and efficiency of the unit as well. This company's called EHC. So, Electric Heating Company, and they do a range of electric boilers, water, electric water, everything, electric water cylinders, electric radiators. So this is a very good company for all heating that's electric, heating water and heating, central heating, underfloor heating that's electric. We've used two of these before on an underfloor heating system. He had two side by side, which was doing one side of the house, underfloor heating, and the other was doing the other side of the house for the underfloor heating. And the circuit board blew on it very easily, so we ended up that being replaced as well. <clears throat> a different job. So if you want to run wet underfloor heating, these things are ideal. They don't take up much room because this is called a slim gym. And they do a range from six kilowatt to 14 kilowatt, I think. So if you have wet underfloor heating, you need to get rid of your old gas boiler. This is a good way of doing it. 